Auditory tube. The auditory tube is also known as the pharyngotympanic tube or the eustachian tube. The auditory tube is a trumpet-shaped channel which connects the middle ear cavity with the nasal pharynx. It is about four centimeters long and is directed downwards, forwards, and medially. The tube is divided into bony and cartilaginous parts. Bony part. The bony part forms the posterior and lateral one third of the tube. It is 12 millimeters long and lies in the petrous part of the temporal bone near the tympanic plate. Its lateral end is wide and opens onto the anterior wall of the middle ear cavity. The medial end is narrow and is jagged for attachment of the cartilaginous part. The lumen of the tube is oblong, being widest from side to side. Relations Superiorly, it is related to the canal for the tensor tympani. Medially, it is related to the carotid canal. Laterally, it is related to the corda tympani thine of the sphenoid, auriculotemporal nerve, and the temporomandibular joint. Cartilaginous part. The cartilaginous part forms the anterior and medial two-thirds of the tube. It is 25 millimeters long and lies in the sulcus tubae, a groove between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the apex of the petrous temporal. It is made up of a triangular plate of cartilage which is curled to form the superior and medial walls of the tube. The lateral wall and floor are completed by a fibrous membrane. The apex of the plate is attached to the medial end of the bony part. The base is free and forms the tubal elevation in the nasal pharynx. Relations Anterolaterally Tensor villi palatini Mandibular nerve in its branches Otic ganglion Corda tympani Middle meningeal artery and medial pterygoid plate. Posterior medially, petrous temporal and levator villi palatini. The levator villi palatini is attached to its inferior surface and the salpingo pharyngeus to its lower part near the pharyngeal opening. Blood supply. The arterial supply of the tube is derived from the ascending pharyngeal artery, the middle meningeal arteries, and the artery to the pterygoid canal. The veins drain into the pharyngeal and pterygoid plexuses of veins. Lymphatics drain into the retropharyngeal nodes. Nerve supply. The cartilaginous part is supplied by the nervous spinosus or meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve. The bony part is supplied by the tympanic plexus formed by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Function. The tube provides a communication of the middle ear cavity with the exterior, thus ensuring equal air pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane. The tube is usually closed, but opens during swallowing, yawning, and sneezing by the actions of the tensor and levator villi palatini muscles. Clinical anatomy. Infections may pass from the throat to the middle ear through the auditory tube. This is more common in children because the tube is shorter, wider, and more straight in them. Inflammation of the auditory tube is often secondary to an attack of the common cold or of a sore throat. This causes pain in the ear which is aggravated by swallowing due to blockage of the tube. Pain is relieved by installation of decongestant drops in the nose, which help to open the ostium. The ostium is commonly blocked in children by enlargement of the tubal tonsil.